It's time for On Target Radio, Chicagoland's only radio show dedicated to educating, entertaining, and discussion of firearms, legislation, and your Second Amendment rights. Presented in part by the Illinois State Rifle Association, Illinois Gun Works, Pelcher's Shooters Supply, and Safer USA. Here's your host, firearm instructor, educator, and enthusiastic Second Amendment proponent, David Lombardo. And welcome to On Target Radio, America's voice for the Second Amendment. I'm your host, David Lombardo, and across the council for me is my co-host, Tim Dale. And say hi, Tim. How you doing? Hi. I got yelled at last time I said, how you, you doing? Did. I got to say hi. I, I give you something simple to do, and you bobble it. Well, you know, somebody has to. I guess so. I'm sure it will be your turn several times over the next hour. Never. Never happen. <laughs> anyway, every Sunday night from 9 to 10 p.m., Tim and I will be here talking about all things Second Amendment. And you, as our listener, will have the opportunity to call in and talk to our guests. And for the 17th week in a row, Tim. Yes, you're going to invite him again? I am indeed. We are inviting Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel to come in to our studio and discuss gun control more now than ever before. He may be out of the country uh, discussing how to oppress citizens, you know, some oppressive citizen conference somewhere. Just be looking for the black the black SUVs in front of your house starting <laughs> tonight, okay? Uh, tonight we're going to talk about shotgun sports. Which I've been, I've been waiting for it, guy. yeah. yeah I, 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 too. I shoot trap uh, at the Newark Sportsman's Club by Yorkville every Friday night. Are they going to pay us for that plug? <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so tonight we'll talk shotgun sports. We're going to take your questions or comments at 312-642-5600. 312-642-5600. Or go to Facebook and like our page on Target Radio and ask a question there. But first, first, it's David's rant of the week. Oh, man. You have 30 seconds. Nice try. start. As many of you know, I lost my two golden retrievers, Rocky and Megan, last year. Setting aside the maudlin aspect of their deaths, there was also a practical aspect. Megan was a hell of a watchdog. Granted, as a golden retriever, actually hurting someone wasn't in Megan's job description. But regardless, if you stepped on my property, she would torch off like the hound of the Baskervilles, and frankly, that was good enough. As a journalist, when I went on location to cover Hurricane Katrina, I brought a forty-five and Megan for protection. Frankly, it was downright creepy no longer having a dog in the house. So enter Wilson. To be honest, Wilson isn't a golden retriever, and... To some, Wilson is ugly and downright dangerous looking, but that is the point, isn't it? Wilson's job description does include home protection, and frankly, I now sleep better at night knowing he's there, ever faithful, and always ready to protect. But numerous people have commented about how Wilson worries them. One neighbor went so far as to say Wilson's raison d'etre is to attack. He rarely leaves my property, and when he does, he's always with me and restrained. But okay, some folks still fear him. And they fear having him in the neighborhood. So yesterday, I conducted a little experiment. I had Wilson lay at the, uh, on the floor right by the open front door, facing outward toward the street, exposed to whatever or whomever might pass by, with absolutely nothing holding him back. For three hours, I sat in the living room at a distance from Wilson, exerting no control over him at all, and just watched him as cars drove by, men walked their dogs, women jogged, and even little children passed within 100 feet. One time, as two little children ran by screaming in laughter and jostling one another, I thought I saw the slightest bit of change. But it was probably nothing more than a passing cloud momentarily causing the sunlight to flicker that made his demeanor momentarily appear different. Through it all, Wilson lay there ever ready but totally passive. Good Wilson. Good boy. Yes, to some Wilson is ugly and has bad reputation and even frightening. I personally think it's just bad press. To me, I think he's beautiful and a good, loyal companion. Yes, that little experiment taught me I can rest comfortably knowing that my Wilson Combat AR-15 carbine wouldn't hurt a fly unless I asked him to. And that, Tim, is my rant for the week. We figured that we were all lying. Who's Wilson? I went, (laughs) made my little rifle move. Yeah, I get no support from you at all. You know that? Uh, I think I did like three weeks ago. I did agree with you one time. Uh, It would be inappropriate to not comment on what has happened the past few days. And and I uh, will probably have lots of people call in. In our um, third segment, Richard Pearson, who is uh, the executive director and a lobbyist for the Illinois State Rifle Association, will come in and talk about 
the events that have unfolded in the past few days in the Illinois legislature. But I would just like to say at this juncture, thank you for calling. We, meaning collectively we, all of us, on Wednesday when it was first announced that uh, they were going to go for the biggest gun ban in the history of Illinois. Am I understating that? In the case? history of the country, yeah. Actually, yeah, probably in the history of the country. Nancy Pelosi and, and uh, all of her compatriots and uh, the other, some of the other ladies in Congress, So they only dreamed of those things. Exactly. And uh, we said, man the phones. By 7 p.m. that night, every senator's inbox, voicemail box, was full. Yes, they Nobody were. could get through to anyone. We literally deluged them. So that, uh, that was in the Senate. It was in subcommittee. And basically, they threw up their hands and go, we don't have the votes to get out of committee. Well, then, we, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. And then it came back, and they put it over, moved it over to the House. Right. And, uh, and we said again, that was uh, yesterday came out with it, because today was the day they were going to try and move it out of the House. And, uh, and again, they, we just buried the phones, just literally buried the phones. And they threw their hands up today. Now, here's the thing, and Richard will talk a lot more about this, but here's the thing. A lot of people are saying, we won. We didn't win. We won a we won For the a day. battle. Yes. Right. We, we won we this battle. We haven't won the we war. We haven't won the war. Exactly. And Richard will talk more about that in our third segment. So you'll definitely want to hang around and listen to that. But now we are going to talk about shotgun sports. And uh, we have... With us this evening, Pat and Nancy Donaldson from Aurora Sportsman's Club and Wayne Schlehoff from Blackhawk Sportsman's Club. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for inviting Thanks me, for David. Having us. Thanks, Dave. So I think a good way to start is we, we get calls at Safer USA. People go, you know, I want to learn how to shoot shotgun. I go, okay, what do you want to do? Well, I want to shoot skeet. I go, do you actually know what skeet is? Well, that's where they throw that thing in the air and you shoot it. It would probably be a good start to let's just talk about, define what the different shotgun sports are. This is the participation portion for our guests. Well, I'm, you know, I'm glad you said that, though, Dave, seriously, because I also have a lot of people who walk up and say, hey, I want to shoot trap. And what they seem to think is that trap or skeet or whatever is just throwing a clay in the air. And there are some defined games, really, that go with those terms. I'm going to turn it over to Pat and let him explain what those games are. This is the wife-to-husband handoff. There you got it. Well, trap is the oldest of the games. It involves a single shot to a machine that's throwing out away from the shooters. There are five shooters in a line. They each take turns, and it's a single trap, and it launches at about 25 to 35 yards. And what happens is everybody takes one shot, and then it cycles back, And it cycles all the way back. So you go through... How many per five po- stations? And then after you, oh, well, you do five shots at each shots position at a spot, and then everybody moves. Everybody moves. Right. So you're basically shooting how many rounds? A box, twenty five rounds. Which is twenty five rounds. Yep. That's trap. That's trap. Okay. What else do we have? Well, there's skeet. Okay. Uh, skeet differs from trap in that there are two traps on the field. Uh, there's a total of eight shooting positions, seven on a hundred and eighty degree semicircle, and the eighth one is at the center of that circle. And all the shooters at that time were going to shoot each station at a time. And it's going to be either two single shots and a, a, a simultaneous pair, or it's just going to be the two single shots for a total of 25 shots. And you have on each side of the field a high house and a low house, one of each. Uh, and the clays come out at a very specific uh, trajectory, aiming at a uh, stake at the other end of the field, so you know exactly the trajectory, the flight of the clay target, where it's going. Okay, you're listening to On Target Radio, AM 560 WIND. We're talking about um, shotgun sports. So we've talked about trap, we've talked about skeet, but there's still more. Now, but I want to clarify one thing. Trap is a term that refers to a machine, right? Also, correct. Correct. So that's where the the term comes from. Mm -hmm. It's the machine that throws the clay bird. Right. Okay. So what other sport do we have? There's also sporting clays. And which is the golf of yeah, shooting. Yeah, exactly. Some people call it the lazy man's golf. Uh, with I know, a shotgun. a lot of walking. <laughs> exactly. Well, but it's a, it's a relatively short course in terms of the difference between 18 holes of golf versus True. 10 or 15 stations of sporting clays. Uh, but the sporting clays is set up to replicate game. So each station that you walk up to, at least in theory, replicates quails flying off or geese flying off or rabbits running across the ground. And, and that... 
at Aurora Sportsman's Club, I would add, we have a very challenging draft course. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, how many stations? Uh, it varies by course. In our case, it's a 10-station, 17-machine course, and you shoot 100 uh, clays in one course. Okay. Uh, we've got about 20 seconds left. Then we have five-stand. Pat, what's five-stand? Five-stand is what's known as the lazy man's Sporting clays course because For those who don't want to walk at all, <laughs> it's, you hardly walk at all. That's right. There are five shooting positions. Uh, our station is set up on a skeet course uh, to use those machines. We have a total of ten machines, so there are an awful lot of variable target presentations that you get, and it's a very quick game. Again, it's twenty-five targets, and uh, that's going to take us into uh, the break. Uh, we're talking about shotgun sports on On Target Radio, AM five sixty. W-I-N-D. You can find this podcast and others at Gun Rights Radio Network, gunrightsradio.com, podcasting freedom. Hi, I'm David Lombardo, host of On Target Radio. You're living proof that radio advertising reaches listeners. In the two years I've been advertising on AM560 WIND, Safer USA grew from 300 students a year to over 1,200. By coupling our On Target Radio broadcast with our Facebook page, we found our audience is steadily growing, and in only two months it appears we've exceeded 5,000 listeners. Over 34% are in the age group 25 to 34, 26% are 35 to 44. We have listeners from Rock to Western Michigan and Southern Wisconsin to St. Louis. Thanks to live streaming on the Internet, we also have listeners as far away as Germany, Japan, and New Zealand. On Target Radio is offering low-cost sponsorship opportunities on Chicago's premier conservative talk radio station. Advertising on AM560 WIND has worked for Safer USA. Let me show you how it can work for you. Call 815-744-5487. Join the On Target Radio team today at 815 744 We now return to On Target on AM 560 WIND. If you have a question or opinion, the studio line is 312-642-5600. Now, here's your host, firearm expert and educator, David Lombardo. We're back with more On Target Radio. And we want to put out a plug. We are looking for someone to do sales, advertising sales for our show. And if you have any interest in doing ad sales for On Target Radio and being part of our family, unlike Tim 1 and Tim 2, you get paid to do this. And Tim is circling his finger because Tim wants to do his segment, Fighting Back. And this segment is brought to you by the Illinois State Rifle Association. I found this week's Fighting Back from a link posted by one of our friends on Facebook, and it's all about girl power. A hotel, a hotel clerk, clerk with a gun may have thwarted a robbery Friday morning, January 4th, in Casper, Wyoming. Just before 1 a.m., two males entered a local quality inn with their faces concealed. One of the suspects told the clerk it was a holdup, making a gun gesture with his hand. The, cur- the clerk, I'm having a hard time with that, then pulled the gun from her lunchbox and pointed it at the suspects who fled the scene. This is the second time in as many months where an attempted robbery was foiled by someone else fighting back by carrying a gun and being prepared to use it in the Casper area. On Saturday, December 3rd, at the Modern Nail Salon in a local shopping center, police say another male suspect entered the business and asked if anyone wanted to buy some diamonds. Do people walk into nail salons and ask to buy di- sell Apparently diamonds? So. I, I, anyway. <laughs> Witnesses say How he many then reached put a gun in their lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Witnesses say he then reached into his coat pocket and started to pull a silver-colored pistol. A customer at the salon then pulled a handgun out of her purse and pointed it at the suspect who fled the scene. Girl power. This has been Fighting Back, brought to you by the Illinois State Rifle Association. I'm still on the gun and lunchbox thing. Yeah, Is know. that a ho ho? <laughs> okay, fine. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> I have a question, and for people who are not into shotguns. Uh, we should probably talk a little bit about shotgun. What is gauge? Gauge is the size of the shell. Uh, the standard shotgun used for most of the shotgun sports is a 12-gauge shotgun. And that shell is approximately a three-quarter inch diameter, two and three-quarter inches long. Uh, other gauges are 16, 20, uh, 410, and 28-gauge. And the, as you go down... That is a smaller shell, smaller shotgun barrel, et cetera, et cetera. As the number goes down. That's correct. If you want to know some really minute history, back in the days before fine instruments, when gunsmiths made shotguns, they used to take a pound of lead, 
They would divide it into 20ths for 20 gauge, 12ths for 12 gauge. Oh. They would make that 12th or 20th uh, of a pound a sp- perfect spherical ball, and then they would use that to size their shotgun barrel. So that's where 12, 20, 10, 16, all that came in. Other than 410, which is actually the outside diameter of the case of the shell. It never ceases to amaze me what a walking box of trivia you truly are. And somebody met with from the cold, silence. somebody from the control room was talking in my ear oh, while the I whole see. time you were talking, and I heard nothing you said. <laughs> there it is. Um, you're listening to On Target Radio, AM 560 WIND. We're talking about the shotgun sports this evening, um, and we are taking your calls at 312-642-5600, 312-642-5600, or go to our Facebook page, On Target Radio, and ask a question. We'll answer it. And while you're there... Please like us and recommend us to your friends. So we talked a little bit about the different types of shotgun sports. We talked about gauge because people are used to thinking of cartridges or what they like to call bullets. Um, But gauge is a little confusing. How do people get into this sort of thing? I mean, it's not inexpensive to buy a shotgun. So how do we get started? Well, I'll tell you how I got started. Uh, My brother and I were out pheasant hunting and we had a bad day. And he said, you know, there's a Sporting Clays course down the road. Let's go over there. And I said, well, what the heck is Sporting Clays? And I went and I tried it, and I've been hooked ever since. And I think it has something to do with that instant report, that that, that instant uh, proof of, of how you did, uh, of seeing that clay break, uh, that, that really got me hooked. And I really other, like Sporting Clays. And the other thing that I enjoy so much is the camaraderie that I have with the, the friends that I shoot with. Uh, I shoot with the, pretty much the same guys uh, at every tournament, and we have a great time. We're good friends, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It, it, and that's an, an interesting perspective because when you're a pistol shooter or rifle shooter, not that you don't have friends and you don't go shooting with them, but is it fair to say it's a less social sport? Those are less social sports, but shotgun is is a highly social thing. Yes, it is. It's true. And I got started by taking a class, and I would recommend anybody who's interested in any of the shotgun sports to start there. And just take a basic NRA-type shotgun class. Exactly, sure. And at Aurora Sportsman's Club, Pat, you and Nancy actually offer, um, is it free? or? I, uh, I we do. We offer free to members. Uh, sometimes there's a, there's a small charge to non-members to pay for the clays. Uh, but we do a class, and we also go out and do field practice and teach them how to shoot two of the games. Now, unlike a handgun and a rifle, where fit does have somewhat of a role, in shotgun, fit is a much bigger deal, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Can can you explain that? Fit is extremely important in shotgun shooting. Um, It has to do with the way the stock uh, comes up against your shoulder and how your eye alignment uh, is a function of looking down the barrel. Unlike pistol shooting or rifle shooting, the skills needed in shotgun shooting are very dynamic because the target, in fact, is constantly moving at about 35 to 45 miles an hour. So you have to be, instead of static, very fluid in your movements. And I often compare that to a golf swing. A golf swing is fluid and dynamic. Moving the gun onto a moving target, it has that same skill set. And for a, for a pistol or rifle shooter, the thing that throws them is with pistol and rifle, you focus on the front sight. That's totally different for shotgun. Totally different from shotgun. Shotgun isn't aimed. You point it and shoot, and the shotgun moves as though it were part of your arms. It's not a separate thing that you're looking down to aim and shoot. It's said that uh, the best shotgun shooters, clay shooters, are focused hard on the clay target, that they can see the rings of the target as it flies through the sky, much like a, a baseball hitter is so focused on the seams of the baseball as, as it comes towards them. Are the different sports, um, sporting clays, trap, skeet, five stand, do they require different equipment, different guns? Not Pe- at all. People who are competitive do sometimes have specific guns for different types of clay shooting, but for the recreational shooter, no, not really. The typical but- shotgun that is used for these is uh, either an over or under shotgun, which is two barrels or what's called the semi-automatic shotgun. Uh, and that has, the advantage of that is a little less recoil, um, but they both put the shell out there, and uh, they're both fun to shoot. You're listening to AM560 WIND Radio. This is uh, 
on Target Radio. We're talking about shotgun sports. I want to get back to fit for just a second. Unlike a handgun, and, and, and realistically, to a certain degree, unlike rifle, where fit does count, um, but not as much. Can you just go to, like, a store and buy a shotgun? I mean, how do you actually deal with fit? What, what makes it right? One of the issues with shotgun shooting and introducing it to um, people of smaller frames is that most shotguns that you buy off the rack at a regular store are geared to an average American male of about 5'10 to 6'1 of average uh, sleeve length, average build. If you fall outside of those parameters, you can run into trouble, and that's why sh- fit that describes the length of the stock and the way it's created, the comb, if you will, how high it comes up on your cheekbone, it becomes all important. The good thing is is that many manufacturers offer youth size stocks for their shotguns that can grow with the youth or it can be fitted easily to, say, a female who's only 5'3 or 5'2. Uh, Tim on Facebook asked, what is an ideal make and model of shotgun for trap or skeet or sporting clays or five stand? You've got about 30 seconds. For a beginner, what would be an ideal gun? You well, can't shake your head, Pat. That doesn't. I well, would go for an average, less expensive, semi-automatic shotgun. That's a good all-around shotgun, can be used for all the different sports that we've talked about, as well as hunting, offers a reduction in recoil, and it's less expensive to get into than a more expensive over and under side by side. Twenty. Or, go ahead. You can get into a, a shotgun for as inexpensively as five hundred dollars. Uh, I have a friend who competes on Team USA, both here and in Europe, uh, with a forty thousand dollars shotgun. Just to give you an idea. So anywhere in between. Twelve or twenty. I mean, twenty has less recoil, no? Not necessarily. It really depends on the on the gun and how it fits you and if you shoot it properly. So if it's fit properly to you and you shoot it properly and it's on your face where it's supposed to be and in your shoulder where it's supposed to be, there may not be much recoil at all. Some people are afraid of the gauge when they should really be more focused on how it's fit and how you're shooting it. Okay. We're going to be back with more on Target Radio in just a minute. Richard Pearson from the Illinois State Rifle Association will be on talking about what happened in Springfield. You can hear Gun Rights Radio Network on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, or Palm phones. On demand and on the go. Don't have Stitcher? Download it for free today at Stitcher.com or in the app stores. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Gun Rights Radio Network shows can be found under sources. Attention firearm owners or those considering exercising your Second Amendment rights. I want to tell you about Illinois Gun Works. From Foyd services and new firearm purchases to gunsmith services and an indoor shooting range, Don and his staff will assist you without attitude or pressure. Need training? Illinois Gun Works popular Illinois Responsible Firearm Owners class teaches you the regulations to legally defend yourself, own, and transport your firearm. There's a required class for a Chicago firearm permit and popular new shooter familiarization class, including one for women. Now, I took this class and urge you to reserve your spot fast for this fun class. Illinois Gun Works offers a wide selection of training and certification classes, from security work to those just considering ownership, even special group classes. Illinois Gun Works Chicagoland's full-service firearm headquarters is located on Grand Avenue, just a block west of Harlem, in Elmwood Park. Call 708-452-0040 or visit IllinoisGunWorks.com. That's 708-452-0040. Hi, I'm David Lombardo, host of On Target Radio. You're living proof that radio advertising reaches listeners. In the two years I've been advertising on AM560 WIND, Safer USA grew from 300 students a year to over 1,200. By coupling our On Target Radio broadcast with our Facebook page, we found our audience is steadily growing, and in only two months, it appears we've exceeded 5,000 listeners. Over 34% are in the age group 25 to 34, 26% are 35 to 44. 
Network. We have listeners from Rockford to Western Michigan and Southern Wisconsin to St. Louis. Thanks to live streaming on the Internet, we also have listeners as far away as Germany, Japan, and New Zealand. On Target Radio is offering low-cost sponsorship opportunities on Chicago's premier conservative talk radio station. Advertising on AM560 WIND has worked for Safer USA. Let me show you how it can work for you. Call 815-744-5487. Join the On Target Radio team today at 815-744-5487. You're listening to On Target Radio on AM560 WIND with David Lombardo. Here's David with more interesting conversation on firearms, safety, your Second Amendment rights, and much more. To participate, call the studio at 312-642-5600. And we're back with more on Target Radio. We're talking about uh, shotgun sports this evening, but right now we would uh, like to have Richard Pearson, the executive director and a lobbyist for the Illinois State Rifle Association, come on our show. And, uh, Richard, tell us a little bit about what's been going on in Springfield. Well, we had a very busy week in Springfield. Uh, we tried the, uh, the uh, Illinois Senate, and uh, President Cullerton tried an end run with uh, uh, two bills, Senate Bill 815, or excuse me, House Bill 815 and 1263, and uh, both of those were um, were defeated. And then today they tried a, a Senate bill that was in the House, um, and I've forgotten the, I've even forgotten the number now already. But um, at the very beginning, uh, after a few days of heavy pressure, the uh, the uh, chairman of the uh, committee stood up and said there will be no more bills, gun bills called this session and adjourned the meeting, and that was it. Now, the question that comes to my mind, and, and what I had said to Tim today, we were at the Gotcha Outdoors show when we uh, talked to you and heard that. Is there any chance that they could just say, ha-ha, gotcha, and do an end run on Monday? They could. That's true. Although it appears that doing an end run will not be that popular. Richard, should they? Should we all still be making phone calls to anyone? Well, the answer is I think the message is there, and uh, generally, if they said there would be no more gun bills, they if they if they lie to the uh, press and to the rest of the legislature, it wouldn't be a very good thing for them. So I don't expect anything. Now, Wednesday we seat a new legislature. Is that not correct? Yeah, now there's the problem. <laughs> it's, it's nice to have. You know everything sorted out. <laughs> yes. So what what will happen on Wednesday is the uh, they'll have the inauguration, and uh, then the new legislature will be seated, and then they'll be around on Thursday and possibly on Friday, but they'll just be doing housekeeping work and trying to figure everything out, and then they'll be gone until January 29th. But on January 29th, you can expect the fun to begin. Do you have a feel for the composition of the new legislature? I do. It's not as good as the old legislature. Oh, seriously? For our purposes, but uh, but we're going to be there, and we're going to work really hard. Now, one of the things we kept hearing today and yesterday at the, at the Gotcha Outdoor Show in uh, Kankakee, people would come up to us and they, you know, they would lament that all this was going on. But then we would hear like, "Well, but you know, I, I'm a shotgun shooter and." You know, I, I know you guys with pistols and rifles, but Glenn Nixon, who I know you know Glenn, Glenn writes in on, on Facebook and says semi-automatic shotguns are considered assault weapons, according to Madigan and Culligan. Or Cullerton. I mean, they're in as much jeopardy as anything, aren't they? Well, they are, and one, one, uh, one of them would even include pump shotguns. So you'd be down to single barrels and double barrels. That'd be it. We know that one of the great tactics of the anti-gunners is to divide and conquer, and they they go to the fringe edges and pick off small groups that nobody else cares. Oh, well, that's those guys, you know, who really cares. And that, that just keeps moving closer and closer towards the core. Is this not an issue that every single person that owns any kind of a firearm has got to rally around? Well, I think so. Um, you know, a, a week or two weeks ago on the Thursday Bulletin, I mentioned the thing called the Farmer Doctrine. Doctrine which uh, was adopted by the 1985 Gun Rights Policy Conference and has been renewed every year since then. And it says uh, an attack on, it's, it's, it's patterned after the NATO doctrine, an attack on any gun, group of gun owners or, or classes of firearms shall be construed as an attack on all of them. So we, it is 
very important that we all stick together like glue. You're listening to On Target Radio, AM 560 WIND. We're talking with Richard Pearson, the executive director of the Illinois State Rifle Association. Um, Richard, let's turn federal for a moment. Uh, Feinstein has come out with what literally would end firearm ownership in this country for all intents and purposes. Is that not true? Well, yes. I mean, what we saw in the state legislature is probably prototypes of what's going to happen federally. So now, how, 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 with the Supreme Court decision weighing in that it, the Second Amendment is an individual right, how, how can that possibly gel? Well, they, well it, maybe it can't gel, but remember, these people have the power to pass the law and run right over you. It takes you years, then, to get it overturned in court. So Feinstein's astoundingly sweeping proposed legislation could potentially pass. Oh, yes, that's true. We do have control of the House, though, do we not? We do. We do. But, you know, they're going to, they're going to try to blacken the name of uh, gun owners every way they can, and we can't let them get away from it. Well, and, you know, that's a good point, because we were just sitting here on, on the breaks listening to the news. Virtually every news break has something about... Remember this assault weapon thing? Remember that one? And they're tragic things, and, and I certainly don't mean to demean them, but they, they continuously are just beating the drum. That's true. But we are starting to beat it back. You know, one of the things that really shocked them was when they figured out that, you know, I and, uh, and uh, some others came out in favor of uh, armed police officers. I know. And they found out what a terrible idea it was, so they found out it was Bill Clinton's idea. And exactly. They didn't know what to say. Richard, thank you for being on again as always. All right. We'll be back with more on Target Radio after these messages. For 35 years, Pelcher's Shooter's Supply has served the Lansing area. Pelcher's offers new and used firearm sales, appraisals, and gunsmithing service. Pelcher's new spacious showroom has hundreds of major brand firearms and supplies, and PelcherGuns.com features daily specials. Pelcher's Shooter Supply, on the corner of Ridge Road and Henry Street in downtown Lansing. Online at P-E-L-C-H-E-R-Guns.com or call 708-474-0662. You're listening to On Target on AM560 WIND with David Lombardo. Here's David with more interesting conversation on firearms, safety, your Second Amendment rights, and much more. To participate, call the studio at 312-642-5600. And we're back with more on Target Radio. We're talking tonight about shotgun sports, and in the studio we have Pat and Nancy Donaldson from the Aurora Sportsman's Club and Wayne Schlehoff from Blackhawk Sportsman's Club. Children, are they good in shotgun sports? Do we have issues with children or... No? Are there special considerations? Well, when we have classes, we do make sure that the child can handle the size shotgun that they're there to shoot. We do have youth shotguns. We want to make sure, as I said earlier, that they are holding it properly and shooting it properly, and that the gauge is okay, that they can stand the recoil of whatever gauge they're shooting. But as long as the child is with a parent or legal guardian and is old enough to pay attention to the classroom safe with the, fi- with the firearm and can shoot it safely, age is really not much of an issue. And please don't overlook the disabled, too. I have seen people and youths in wheelchairs shooting all of these disciplines. Uh, it, it can be done. It's not difficult at all. There is what I think an amazing video of a guy who has no arms. Have you seen this? Yes. Sitting on the hood of his car, not only shooting a semi-automatic pistol, but loading the magazine Mm -hmm. and putting the magazine in the gun, and he does the whole thing with his feet. Mm -hmm. So I I have always said this. People sell disabled people short, and that's that's a serious mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, Where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, we had, I don't remember if Tim was involved in a youth camp at the time, but we had someone who, a young kid who was missing a hand, who had never shot archery before, and someone, but he wanted to try it. It was one of our events. So somebody held the bow for him so that he could shoot archery and fell in love with archery. We had somebody make up a prosthetic for him so that he could hold a bow himself. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that people can do. You just got to have an open mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We have a caller. John from Bensonville is asking about gun safety and shotguns. Uh, John, 
How you doing? Hi, Dave. Uh, it's nice to talk to you. Uh, I'm a NRA life member of the NRA, Good and I'm all for gun safety, and I appreciate what you do for uh, gun safety and teaching proper firearms etiquette and the like. Well, thanks, John. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a question, and I, I just turned, tuned in, and I think that your guests were uh, commentating on uh, which, which is better for a starting shooter, a 12 or a 20 gauge. Yes, we did talk about that. Okay, and w- could you just recap what was the quick that they said? Well, for an adult, in my opinion, a 12-gauge is going to give you the best opportunity to, to break the target. A 20-gauge is going to give you maybe a slight recoil uh, or less recoil uh, than a 12, but all the, the semi-automatic 12-gauge is going to give you a far less recoil than all of them. Okay, okay. Now, when I was growing up as a kid, it was always taught to start a kid on a 410 and Ooh. then work their way up to a 12-gauge. You don't want to do that, John. Uh, that's kind of been my experience as well. It's so hard to hit with a 410. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and I think it's that's kind of been debunked, that a 410 actually gives you a disadvantage when you're learning. Exactly. Due to the shot pattern, the amount of uh, force of, the, of that shot coming out, it's just not going to give you the opportunity to break a clay and have success as quickly as shooting a regular gauge. You actually have to be a better shotgun shooter Absolutely. to do that with a 410. Right. Well, what you're talking about here is the less least amount of shot in a shotgun shell possible in a 410. But and that's why it's difficult. But shells cheaper than 12-gauge? No, actually no. not at all. No. 12 is oh. the least expensive. Oh. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, it's very common that people think that, but in fact, it's, it's not the case. Thanks mm. for calling in, John. We appreciate it. Um, we did get uh, something on Facebook, just to step back. Uh, William on Facebook asked, with the attack on assault weapons in Illinois, how does the Illinois concealed carry stand a chance? Um, Obviously, it doesn't do it any good. There's no question about that. But it's kind of a separate issue. And uh, next week, we are going to uh, have Don Moran on talking about iGold. Right. And uh, that's probably a question that's best suited to come up next week because that's kind of a, a subject matter area that we would be talking about. Right. But just real quick, the federal 7th District Court has said that the Illinois law, the ban, is unconstitutional. And that we had a hundred, the uh, Springfield had 180 days to come out with with a law. So this is a totally separate. They've been ordered right. by the court to deliver concealed carry to the residents of Illinois. Now, how that turns out? Yes, how it turns you know, out is, right. is up for negotiation. It's a different issue. And am I right, Dave, in thinking though that even if, God forbid, some of these bans do go into effect, you can still carry a revolver? Well, it's going to depend on what the legislature comes up with. The Supreme Court, when they said you have a right to own a firearm, to defend yourself, and the the Seventh said basically that right doesn't end at your doorstep, in no way qualifies what you can carry. Right. I mean, technically, the legislature could say, fine, you can have a single-shot Derringer. There you go. Mm -hmm. Enjoy yourself. So obviously that's going to be challenged, but, you know, it's, it's very much up in the air. But the one thing that's pretty clear at this point, unless the Seventh rules en blanc and the whole thing reverts, the one thing that's pretty clear is we're going to have concealed carry. Yes, we will, and it should be this year. It should be. August, September. So it's actually very complex. Uh, It is not as simple as you think it is because there's a lot of players involved in the Sheriff's Association, State Police, the Democrats, the Republicans, Lisa Madigan, the 7th. I mean, there's a whole lot of permutations that are wrapped around this thing, and it's not as trivial as people seem to think it is. And I want to send out a little warning. I get phone calls from people almost every day now. When are you going to teach the Illinois Concealed Carry course? And I go, as of today, there ain't no such animal. Well, Bob, somebody, is saying, take my course and it'll be good for concealed carry when Illinois gets it. That is crap. It's a a load of bunk. Somebody suggesting something, don't buy that. Yeah, do not buy it. As of today, nobody has any idea what training requirement is going to be. So... Just sit tight. Trust me, we'll be teaching it as soon as we know what it is. And we're going to be back to wrap up the show after these messages with more on Target Radio. I'm David Lombardo, president of Safer USA, Chicagoland's most popular firearm training school. We continue to offer our popular home protection and concealed carry seminar every month. This eight-hour seminar covers everything you need to know to safely and legally use a firearm for both concealed carry and home invasion and qualifies you for Florida and Utah concealed carry permits good in about 30 states. 
Be sure to call and ask how we can help you raise funds for your organization or provide a guest speaker. We're also offering the NRA Basic Pistol Course and our Tactical Pistol 1 and 2. As always, I offer private one-on-one instruction for Basic Pistol, Chicago Firearm Certification, and Basic Home Defense. For further information, please call 877-954-3030 or go to saferusa.com. Say for USA, choosing to own a firearm is your business. Teaching to own it responsibly is ours. That's 877-954-3030 or saferusa.com. You're listening to On Target on AM560 WIND with David Lombardo. Here's David with more interesting conversation on firearms, safety, your Second Amendment rights, and much more. And we're back with more On Target Radio. And if you have the opportunity, go to our uh, Facebook page, On Target Radio, and uh, like us and uh, pass us on to your friends. Uh, Let everybody know that we're here. Um, Let's just wrap it up. Uh, This has been, I think, a good show. It's been an interesting show because we covered uh, not only Shotgun, but all these things that have been going on in Springfield. Tell us a little bit about Aurora Sportsman's Club. Well, Aurora Sportsman's Club is uh, about a 1,400-member club and located in Waterman, Illinois. We've got uh, about 250-some acres that uh, incorporates a whole bunch of pistol and rifle ranges as well as a sporting clays range, trap fields, and skeet fields. Um, the membership is open. Um, we have a great website. It's auroraSC.org, and that talks about the membership and the facilities, and it has a calendar of events uh, you can learn a lot more about our club. I always tell people that if you shoot more than one gun, we're the only club to join because we have literally, as one of our preceding presidents was always fond of saying, if it's illegal in Illinois, you can shoot it at Aurora Sportsman's Club. Plus, we have 3D archery, and we've got a stock fishing pond that just started fishing this year, and they hauled in some big bass on that one. They're catch and release, but big, big bass, and we can hunt, right? That's correct. We can. So we've got just a little bit of everything. You wanted to say something. Yeah, real quick, for those people who have never participated or seen any of these sports taking place, there's several clubs within the two-hour drive of where we sit right here where you can go and just watch the the shooters compete in these games, uh, get an idea what it's like, what's involved, uh, and it's a lot of fun, believe me. And uh, you can, a lot of websites are out there. Uh, Amateur Trap Shooting Association, the uh, National Skeet Shooting Association, National Sporting Clays Association. You can look up their sites. There'll be lots of definitions and rules and things you can learn just from the sites. So everybody come and learn to shoot shotgun. It's good fun. We would like to thank our guests this evening, Pat and Nancy Donaldson and Wayne Schleyhoff. I got that right, see? Thank you very much, Dave. Tim Montague, our technical consultant who is hacking away over in the corner feverishly trying to make the TV cameras work. Vicki Cohen, our call screener. Jack Deiters, our intern. And George Hoffman on the board. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Illinois Gun Works, Pelcher Shooter Supply, Illinois State Rifle Association, our website developer, 31 Moons, and Safer USA. Next week, we're going to talk with ISRA President Don Moran about ISRA and iGold, the Illinois Gun Owners Lobby Day, where citizens have the opportunity to make their views heard in the state capitol. Please set aside March 6th and join Tim and I in Springfield. We will be uh, an integral part of the proceedings. Until then, friend us on On Target Radio, uh, or friend our On Target Radio page on Facebook, and thanks for listening. Say good night, Tim. Good night to everybody. Uh, We had a great time this weekend at the uh, sports show down in Kankakee. We did. We did. We had a really great time. And uh, please listen next week when we talk about iGold. Don Moran, President of the ISRA, is going to be on. He's going to talk about a lot of good things. Just as Dave said, this is so incredibly important with what's happened last week, getting ready to happen this week in Springfield, Uh, the concealed carry issue coming up. We need everybody at all possible that can take a day off. We need them down there. It's a free event. It's a great event. You'll enjoy it a lot. Kids are there. It's not a men-only thing. Ladies, please come also. Uh, young, old, male, female, come down there. We, we need the help. What worries me is that people, having done two iterations of Call Your Legislator, are going to think, well, we're crying wolf when it comes up again. It is not crying wolf. When we tell you make the calls... Get on the phones. We've been doing this for many years. Every year down Springfield, there's 15 to 25 anti-gun bills on average. The ISRA, other groups around the state, 
we keep up that pressure. We have to keep it up every day. We can't back off. And that's it. Thanks for listening. We hope you'll be back next Sunday at 9 p.m. for more On Target Radio. And thanks, Mike, for making it all possible. Thanks, Mom and Dad in Arizona. <laughs> My brother in Okinawa. And, and Donaldson's Wayne, and dog. Father. <laughs> the Donaldson's dog is listening.